Thank you very much for the virtual invitation to the ICL. So today I'll be talking about periodic Tate conjectures and abelioid varieties. And I should say that this is joint work with Oliver Gregory from Exeter. In fact, our work already has appeared in print last year. Um, the title of the article is the same as of this talk. So I'll start with an introduction. Then I will, where I will discuss a little bit about Tate conjectures in general. Then there is Raskin's Tate conjecture, which is a Tate conjecture over the Piatics. We will translate this into semilinear algebra. And then finally, we will apply these results to abelioid varieties. So these are certain abelian varieties over the Piatics. And then already we will give a counterexample to Raskin's conjecture. And it's, I think, Nevertheless, very interesting to see where it fails. Now, I will start with a classical Tate conjecture with um, the statement, a little bit of motivation and evidence. And then I will turn to the already mentioned Piatic Tate conjecture of Raskind to the statement. And I will also um, discuss a little bit why this is the form um, I'm using. Now, what is the classical Tate conjecture? The classical Tate conjecture starts from, say, a smooth and proper variety over a field big F. We, we fix um, a separable closure F bar, and we take the absolute Galois group, that is the set of the group of automorphisms of F bar over F. We let P be the characteristic of F, could be zero, could be positive at this point, and we fix a prime L, which is usually different from P. Now, then we have a cycle class map, which goes from the Neron Severi group tensored with the L addicts to second L addict cohomology. We have to get the Tate twists right, so we are to take the Tate twist by one. And in fact, this map, because X is over F, lands inside the Galois invariance of, of this cohomology group. Now, what is always okay is that this map is injective. The question is, is it surjective? And this subjectivity is precisely the content of the classical Tate conjecture. And it states that subjectivity holds true if F is finitely generated over its prime field. So F could be, for example, a number field or, or a function field, but not a completion of it. This is not what is inside uh, what, what Tate originally conjectured. Now, what's the state of this conjecture? Now, I should also say, to be honest, this is the version for divisors. I will only discuss the version for divisors, that is for co-dimension one cycles. Now, for co-dimension one cycles, in this form, the Tate conjecture is known for abelian varieties. This is work of André, Faltings, Tate, Tankeev, and Zahin. It's also known for hypercalar varieties in characteristic zero by work of André and Tankeev. And for K3 surfaces by Quite a number of people, well, over finite fields, this is Nigat Ogus, um, then, then later Morlik, Madapusi Pera, uh, Francois Charles. So there's quite some history to this. And moreover, for surfaces with PG equals one, so with geometric genus one and characteristic zero, and under the assumption that there is a sufficiently non trivial variation of hot structures. There is a, um, it has been established by Ben Monin. So there is a little bit of evidence for the classical conjecture by Tate for divisors. And so after this preparation, Raskind asked, is there a version for Piatic fields? So that is, if F is a finite extension of QP. Well, of course, QP is not finitely generated over its prime field. The prime field there would be Q, and it's far from being finitely generated. Nevertheless, the Piatics, as we all know, is a sort of arithmetic field, if you want. So maybe there is some version. And so Raskin conjectured the following. Suppose that you have a finite extension of the Piatics. Now let L be equal to P, actually. And assume that you have a smooth and proper variety over the Piatic, over this field F, which has totally degenerate reduction. I will come to this assumption. And then he says, in that case, this map is surjective. So let me already point out, there are 
two main things to observe, namely the question that X has totally re degenerate reduction, I will come to that, as well as the fact that we are looking precisely at the case where the prime L is equal to the P of the piatics. Usually one looks at L different from P. Why L equals to P? Well, suppose L was different from P and we had good reduction. Then by the usual base change theorems, what we are looking at is that then, then this, these Galois invariants, because the inertia acts trivially, this is precisely the Galois invariants under the, of the absolute Galois group of the residue field of the geometric special fiber of, this, of a reduction. So in particular, by this isomorphism here, whatever it, this is, this computes invariants of the special fiber, not of the generic fiber. So of course, there might be cases where they coincide, but there is actually no reason for believing that. In fact, because we are dealing with a piatic field, this should be related to the Tate conjecture for the special fiber. Now, if X doesn't have good reduction, but merely semi-stable reduction, let me mention there are conjectures due to Kansani, um, which deal with what that group should actually compute. But it should be something related to the special fiber. So this suggests that if something is to this conjecture, L should be equal to P. Why totally degenerate reduction? I will come to the definition of that later. There are examples of Lubin Tate and of Ort, starting with elliptic curves with good reduction, where the map, if you take the endomorphisms and tensor it with QP and map it to the endomorphisms of the Piatic Tate module, then you can also ask for surjectivity. This is another Tate conjecture, which is closely related to the Tate conjecture we're looking at, where this map is not surjective. And if you look at this more closely, then you can cook up a counterexample for E times E. So this would be a counterexample to a more general Raskin conjecture, namely one which states surjectivity for L equals P, but not by uh, insisting on totally degenerate reduction. In our article, we have an appendix where we collected a little bit of um, more or less well-known results, which are a little bit scattered over the literature. So basically what I've been just saying is that if we look at this formulation, I mean, we have to assume L is equal to P and we have to assume that X must be in some sense a little bit special. It can't be just, it can't have good reduction. Now, do we know Raskin's conjecture, at least in some examples? And the answer is yes. It is known for products of Tate elliptic curves um, due to Raskin and Schall, who did it for two um, curves. They state, and well, if you look at our article, I mean, it's, it's actually true for products of an arbitrary number of Tate elliptic curves. And it's true for varieties that are uniformized by Drinfeld's upper half plane. This is um, work of Ito and Rapoport. So by now I should say the evidence is rather thin, but a periodic approach to the classical Tate objecture, for to the classical Tate conjecture, for example, via Raskin's Tate conjecture, would be very interesting. Because if Raskin's Tate conjecture was true, and you have a variety which is defined over a number field, then you can look at a prime where it may have totally degenerate reduction. If it's if the Raskin conjecture is true, then in fact, the classical Tate conjecture for the X over the number field follows. In particular, it would say that to a certain extent, one could approach the classical Tate conjecture via a piatic one, and maybe that there is some sort of local version of it. Well, I mean, this is all rather vague, but I would say it is interesting to, to look, have a look at this to see whether some sort of local version is true. So we now have a closer look at Raskin's conjecture and translate it into semilinear algebra to be precise into the language of filtered phi n modules. So how does that work? Well, We start with a piatic field, which we will now call K rather than F. We have a smooth and proper variety, and we assume that it admits a proper and semi-stable model. So the special fiber of, so we have a 
a proper flat morphism, and the special fiber is a simple normal crossing divisor. Now, if you look at, at the um, nth etale cohomology of x over k bar, you take the Tate twist by m and you take the Galois invariance of the absolute Galois group of k, then Piatic Hodge theory identifies this with a certain log crystalline cohomology of the special fiber. Then you take invariance under Frobenius, well, the, the locus where Frobenius acts like multiplication by p to the m, and n is equal to zero, n is the monodromy operator. And so the, the um, intersected with the mth piece of the um, Durham filtration. So if you have a look at it, then the left side of the intersection is something which depends on the special fiber only. This is something we've seen in the L different from P situation. And it is intersected by the filtration, by the nth Durham filtration, which means that there is some information of the big X surviving. Already doesn't look too bad. And so the question is, can we somehow unwind this? Well, we look at the Raskin conjecture. This is where n is equal to 2 and m is equal to 1. And so let me just state it again. So in that case, we're looking at the second log crystalline cohomology of the special fiber and intersected with the first filtration and this um, Frobenius invariance. Now, um, we haven't done totally degenerate reduction. We just assume semi-stable reduction at the moment. So we so in particular the special fiber would be or is a simple normal crossing divisor. So with components yi. Now we do what you usually do in this business. You look at the disjoint union of the components of the special fiber. Then you look at the double intersections, the triple intersections, and you take the disjoint sum of that. And so you have this y upper bracket m. You take, so y double bracket 1 would be just the disjoint union of the components. Um, y upper bracket 2 would be you take any two components, you intersect them, and you take the disjoint union of them, and so forth. And there is a spectral sequence over the complex numbers due to Steenbrink um, in the, um, I think, in, in the arithmetic situation, rapport sync. And then if you want to do it with log crystalline cohomology, this is Mokra Nakajima. So you have a spectral sequence that relates the crystalline cohomology of these intersections. Now, these, these intersections are smooth varieties by definition of a simple normal crossing to the log crystalline cohomology of the special fiber. In particular, it induces a filtration there, which somehow tells you how complicated the, these intersections are. So this is just um, what you always have in such a situation. Now, total degeneration, actually for the purposes of this talk, it is sufficient to assume that the um, odd crystalline cohomology of these y upper bracket m's is zero and the even crystalline cohomology groups are spanned by algebraic cycles. Um, think about, for example, um, project, I mean, projective space is an example, or very rational varieties. So, And so if you take this as, for the time being, as a definition of total degeneration, well, whatever it is, it should be some very simple varieties. And this is what we will be needing for a long time only. I mean, we won't need more. It's just this. Well, if you, if you plug this into the second crystalline cohomology, um, then, well, let me go back. You have this, you have this Durham spectral sequence, this, 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 sorry, this steenbrink rapoport singh mokra nakajima spectral sequence. Um, as I said, there are no odd pieces. They are zero. They're for, for the even ones, um, they're spanned by algebraic cycles. So this gives you a filtration on the log crystalline cohomology and using things like ordinarity and the Durham width complex, if you assume that, you end up actually with a decomposition of the second log crystalline cohomology. And rather than deducing that, let me just make a definition out of that. Well, if you have a Q vector space, we say that it is a direct sum, we, we call it, it has a rational structure. If it's a direct sum of Q, finite dimensional Q vector spaces, 
and we assume that we have linear, Q linear operators on them. One is called phi, and one is called n. So this is really linear, nothing similar, similar, semi-linear, it's linear. So phi operates as identity on one piece, as multiplication by p on the middle pieces, and by multiplication by p squared on the right piece. And we have n, which is zero on the on, on two pieces, and it sort of shifts c to b naught and b naught to a. So this is just some linear algebra datum. Q vector space, two linear operators, and this Q vector space is a direct sum of four different types of spaces. Um, now, whenever you have such a um, data, so a vector space, which is a direct sum of four Q vector spaces, two linear operators, you get an associated phi n module over K naught. Now, K naught is the maximal unramified extension over QP inside K. Namely, you tensor everything up by K naught and you extend phi semi-linearly and n linearly. And you can, where, where sigma is the Frobenius that we have um, on K naught. Now, this is sort of, yeah. So you get a, you get a phi n module associated to this data over K naught. Now, what's the relation to the previous thing? The point is that if you have a variety with totally degenerate special fiber, now totally degenerate in the sense that the special fiber is simple normal crossing and all the um, um, components and their intersections and so forth satisfy this cohomological definition, um, then the spectral sequence, the Steenbrink, Rapoport, Singh, Mokrana, Nakajima, uh, plus cycle class maps equip um, the second crystalline cohomology with a rational structure. This is a straightforward exercise, which I will not do here, but at least it, I mean, it should be plausible that you can do something like this. The geometry of the special fiber is supposed to be very easy. And this was sort of an aside or an important aside where we capture the basic data. Now, in view of the Raskin conjecture, we already translated the Galois invariance of the state twist by one into this second log crystalline cohomology of the special fiber. Frobenius in equals like P, N equals zero, intersected with the fill one. Then we have an rational structure coming from the geometry of the special fiber on the left hand log crystalline cohomology group. And if you, I mean, in that case, it is thanks to the very explicit description of what phi and n are in this case, you can simply compute what this is. Namely, this, the, the locus where n operates like zero and phi acts like multiplication by p just singles out the b1 tensor with qp. So in this sort of, in this description, we have found one of the players. Okay, so now let us have a look at the first logarithmic churn class map from the special fiber. This also lands into this um, um, into this space, and one can show that if you tensor this churn class map with QP, then it surjects onto this piece where phi equals p and n equals zero. So this is um, some sort of subject. Well, this is a subjectivity result now for the log crystalline cohomology of the special fiber. But this is basically, I mean, this this is just the observation that the cohomology of the special fiber should be everything should be explain explainable by algebraic cycles which come either which lie on x naught or um, or on, on the individual components or their intersections. So maybe this is not so surprising. And now, if we now if we now unwind Raskin's conjecture, we are interested in this second etal cohomology tate with by GK. We have identified it as an intersection of some log crystalline cohomology with some fill one. This log crystalline cohomology, the invariance we are looking at, is precisely the logarithmic um, Picard group of x naught tensored with QP. 
So we are looking at something which is spanned by algebraic cycles. And then what it essentially seems to be saying is that we want to prove surjectivity in Raskin's conjecture. That is that the cycle class map surjects onto the space I've written there in the second line. But this means that every class on the left-hand side lifts to a class of the generic fiber if and only if it lies in this fill one. So the Raskin conjecture becomes now the following. A class in, this, in, the, um, in, the, in the middle, in this pig lock tensor with QP, lifts to the generic fiber if and only if its first crystalline churn class lies in this fill one. Um, now, this looks like what people call variational Tate conjecture, or in this case, because everything is logarithmic and we're dealing with um, totally degenerate varieties. This is a variational log Tate conjecture. And I should say there is a version, there is a theorem by Berthelot and Ogus, a case where X0 is smooth and it has been extended to the semi-stable um, situation by Yamashita, that um, if a class in pig log tensor Q, not QP, lifts to pig X of the generic fiber tensor Q, again, not QP, if and only if its first crystalline churn class lies in this fill one. So this looks as if we're on the right track and if we're also on the right track to understanding what is what Raskin's conjecture, I mean, this already looks like something maybe more familiar. So here it is again, this Bertolo Ogus and Yamashita theorem. And so the question is, can we replace Q with QP in this, in this business here? And so this can be translated, coming back to these rational structures we have, to the following problem in linear algebra. Namely, given a rational structure, which is this, you know, for, uh, for Q vector spaces, linear operator and the, and the extension to some phi n module, then the question is, we have a filtration on, on this V tensor K. And the question is, is it true that taking the intersection with the filtration of, on, of, the, of the Q vector space and tensoring with QP, is this the same as first tensoring the, the, this relevant piece B1 with QP and then intersecting with fill one. Whenever this is true, then the bertolo ogus um, yamashita theorem will tell us that by, by this theorem we can, um, we can lift the class to a, um, uh, the cyclic class of the special fiber to one of the generic fiber and we're done. In fact, it turns out that this is equivalent to um, um, to, the, to the Raskin conjecture, if V is precisely H2 log Chris. And so the theorem we have is a, merely a reformulation of Raskin's conjecture using these other results. If you have an X over a piadic field with totally degenerate reduction, then Raskin's conjecture, namely the surjectivity of this um, cycle, oh, sorry, that should be an errant severity tensor with QP. Um, maps to H2 et al. is surjective, should be equivalent to the Hodge filtration is sort of fill, um, satisfies this equality, this, this in strict inclusion here being an equality. We call this Rask and admissible. And so we have a re we have a translation of the Raskin conjecture to a question about the interplay of some Q vector spaces with some QP vector spaces, which are naturally contained, but the question is, are they always equal? And this is closely related to questions in variational Tate conjectures, where the question is, are results true tensored with Q or what tensored with QP? Now, we couldn't say anything more here, so we started looking at examples. And the examples that we checked were abelian varieties over piadic fields with totally degenerate reduction. There is a whole theorem about them, a theory about them. These are called abelioid varieties. And so it goes like following, we, we want to 
establish or disprove Raskin's conjecture for abelian varieties over piatic fields with totally degenerate reduction. So let me recall that if you have a piatic field, then we have a valuation from k star to the rationals. And whenever you have a g times g matrix with values in k, such that all entries have positive valuation, we can form a matrix simply from these uh, valuations. And it's called a period matrix if this matrix is invertible, with if invertible and if the valuations are positive. And given a period matrix, a G times G matrix, there is a latid, lattice generated by the columns of this matrix inside K star to the G. And you can associate to this a proper and rigid variety over K, K star to the G modulo lambda. Now this looks pretty much familiar to what one does in complex analysis. Note, however, the G times G is not a typo. It is really G times G. So this is a proper and rigid variety. And as over the complex numbers, you, this is not necessarily algebraizable. It's not necessarily a projective variety. There are conditions um, that um, Riemann type conditions that ensure this. So it's a whole parallel world to the complex numbers. Now, um, of course, the easiest example is the case where, genus, where, where G is equal to 1. So where we are looking at a one-dimensional abelioid variety, this is just the Tate elliptic curve. So in some sense, abelioid varieties are generalizations of the Tate elliptic curve. I already mentioned it. If G is bigger or equal to 2, then an abelioid variety is in general not algebraizable. That is, it's a rigid variety, a proper rigid variety, but not necessarily projective. And the special fiber of its neuron model is a split torus. So in that case, we have totally degenerate reduction. Uh, it's also totally degenerate. This um, there are models um, by work of Kuhnemann, which tell you that this is also they are also totally degenerate in the in the, the earlier sense. Now, there is a, a, a piadic logarithm from k star to the um, to the uh, to cp, and then. You can cook up a g by g matrix given by you take the log piece of the entries of that of a period matrix and you multiply it by um, by the order matrix so you take the the the, the, um, the matrix where you take the uh, valuations of, of all the entries of q it's an invertible matrix you multiply it by the left with the inverse so this generalizes this classical invariant from the uh, tate elliptic curve log q modulo order of q. Um, so, and using that, we can, we can do the following. We have two abelioid varieties, say of dimensions g and h, associated to some period matrices as before. And we want to understand the two abelioid varieties and their piadic Tate modules. We will come back to Raskin's conjecture directly after that. And so for abelioid varieties, and I think this is, I think this is more or less well known, um, rational homomorphisms. So the, I mean, the set of homomorphisms between two abelian or abelioid varieties is an abelian group. You tensor it with Q. There, it turns out that there is no difference when working over K or over K bar. Sort of every homo, every geometric morphism is already realized over, uh, over K. And this can be realized as the set of G times H matrices, G and H being the dimensions of A and B, such that M, so these matrices commute with this L matrix I've just um, introduced. And similarly, um, we have homomorphisms between their piadic Tate modules, which can be described by G times M H matrices with values in QP that commute with this matrix uh, L. Um, so the point is again, maybe before switching to the next slide, on the top we have a Q-vector space and something which is defined over Q and on the bottom we have something which is defined over Qp. And then we have the following theorem. I mean, well, it's more of an observation. It's, it's a classical theorem just applied to, to this situation or, or reproven in this situation, but it's, maybe never stated like this before, but it's not deep. If you have an abelioid variety, then Raskin's conjecture, namely the surjectivity of the, and, um, oh, again, I forgot to tensor with QP, so neuron severity of A tensor with QP, 
um, maps surjectively onto these Galois invariants if and only if the natural inclusion of the, if you take the endomorphism ring and you tensor it with QP, you have a natural map to the endomorphism ring of the Tepiatic Tate module and the Galois invariants there, that this is surjective. I should say that this statement is sometimes also called Tate conjecture. For our purposes, we will call it the other Tate conjecture. And that for abelian varieties, or more generally for abelioid varieties, this, these are equivalent. This is a sort of classical observation. So we can now focus on the second. And we already have a description of homomorphisms. So, so if we have a period matrix for some A, then Raskin's conjecture by using this, um, these isomorphisms here becomes the following linear algebra question. Namely, we look at a space of G times G matrices with entries in Q that commute with this matrix L, and then we tensor this space by QP. And of course, this maps to the space of QP matrices that commute with um, this L. So again, it's the question about a, um, an interplace of rational vector, spa uh, vector spaces over Q with vector spaces over QP. And the question is, does it make a difference whether we tensor first with QP and, um, or, or later? So, but in this setting, we have a good chance of actually computing things. And so the main result of our article is that um, using this very explicit example, it is possible to write down counterexamples. Um, and so somehow the trick is to look at, a, at an abelioid surface. The condition P big or equal to five and congruent one modulo three um, looks like maybe a little bit weird. The problem is we want to have not only abelian varieties over QP, we want them to be algebraizable, to be projective. I mean, it's like with the Hodge conjecture, you, you want to have projective counterexamples, not ones that are um, merely Keller varieties. So, um, so this is where, 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 where it becomes a little bit complicated because you have to do some choices nicely. Um, but somehow the upshot, the, the, the idea is simple. You start with a matrix that, with a period matrix, that looks like it's the matrix here on the third to last line, which looks like P11 epsilon M times P. This should be thought of as the period matrix for the product of two tate elliptic curves. And then you change this by this operation S to the minus one, you, you, you change it by a well-chosen symmetric matrix, which has cleverly chosen QP entries, such that this matrix looks periodically over QP, as if it was still the product of two Tate elliptic curves, but over Q, you cannot write it. It's not, in fact, a product of Tate elliptic curves. And so this is how you geometrically realize this difference of Q and QP, and if you look at this long enough, and if you do the proper computations, you see that this gives you a two-dimensional example, counterexample to Ruskin's conjecture. I mentioned already that it was known that for product of Tate elliptic curves, Ruskin's conjecture was true. So sort of in the next two trivial case, namely Rask, uh, abelioid surfaces, projective ones, there are counterexamples. However, what I still find interesting is that Although Raskin's conjecture fails, um, it's it's not, I mean, if, if, if L is different from P, I mean, it, it completely fails, but here you have the impression that it fails only by a little. So maybe there is something more to be said, but um, we, we can't make sense out of this. Yeah, thank you very much.